Hey everyone, it's uh, Mike with Mike Fab. Um, we're gonna start using the cheap TIG welder. Um, and we're gonna start putting this turbo we're into fitness. We end up fitting this turbo into this engine bay. So, um, so what we got here is this is how I like to do it. Uh, I like to figure out, you know, where I want the turbo to be first, and uh, and then kind of hang it there, and then just run um, kind of everything backwards. So, uh, got here is. I just basically braced this turbo up where I wanted it and then I made this little I made this little brace right here. Um, it's basically like two plates. See this plate down here. That is got a couple pieces of five eighths um, round rod welded to it. And then it goes to here. And you'll see that just uh, I have the, I sell these um, flanges in these kits, uh, so my 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 flanges have um, a place for these braces. So that with that you'll see is that's just bolted. Looks like this. It's a good thing it's a new car. So it just looks like that. So that's basically bolted onto there. And what I'll do is when I. I should do it beforehand, but I'm kind of just want to get this knocked out. So um, what I'll do is I'll probably take some uh, some smaller, like quarter or or half inch um, rod, and I'll basically make like little triangles, and I make make a brace to go from here to here, to kind of support it this direction, and probably like maybe a brace that's doing the same from the bottom to the actual mounting tab. So it'll be like little triangles, and this will be welded out all the way on both the top and the bottom of that, and that will uh, that'll make it sturdy. So I mean, it's got a little bit of flux in it, which you know, there's basically two thoughts uh, when mounting these guys. You know, um, I have poly bushings; they're pretty. They should be pretty stiff. I basically actually ordered leaf spring bushings, <laughs> and I just turned them into to, to motor mount bushings, but. Um, but the thought is, if, if you got a solid mount motor and your motor doesn't, you know, chatter in the in the chassis, it's it's mounted solidly to the chassis, then you can basically just weld your your um you know your mounts up right to the frame. Um, but if you're gonna you know use soft mounts, you know poly or, or, or rubber, then you should probably look to attach the turbo to the engine, and that's what I did. And that's why it's mounted on the side of that that uh, alternator bracket. And that's how it's gonna go. And uh, so then I got, I made a little stub. It just, I had a little bit of uh, angle on this guy, so it's not, it's not perfectly 90. Uh, so I wanted to kind of rectify that, and and that's why I kind of put this little stub right here on. You can see it. Um, and it's just, you know. It will just go. Whoop! Doesn't sound effects explains everything? Just go whoop. So basically, something like that. So, so that's easy. <laughs> but what I think I'm gonna do first is I'm going to I'm going to do the downpipe. So the downpipe is gonna come off of this guy here, and actually it's gonna kind of come up and then it's gonna zoom down and it's gonna head in between number one and number three and then back and down. So all these guys will kind of come up and go to the turbo. This will go under and duck it is kind of my plan. So that is that. We got the, the welding machine out. Um, I've done some beads with it and I had some issues. Um, Primarily, it looks like I might have a, you know, I, I, I talked in one of my videos about about um, how important those, you know, getting quality parts are. Um, I think one of those parts might be messed up. Uh, I think that the gas lens might be messed up 
which just happens every once in a while. It, it makes you scratch your head because, you know, you'll check your gas, you'll turn the gas up, you'll turn the gas down, you know, swap out gas, and, uh, and then, you know, check your lines and, and have you scratch your head because it's real obvious. You know, I, I usually test stuff on stainless steel because it'll tell you, you know, whether it's working how it's supposed to or not. Um, and I just wasn't getting what I wanted. So I swapped out the, the gas lens for an old, uh, an old one I had. I don't have much for these air cold torches. Um, but I found some, like a 1 uh, large cup, which is right here. You can see on the, right there. And it's got a little tiny 1 16th tungsten, but that, that seems to be doing good gas coverage. Um, it's massive and it's, <laughs> I, I don't like it at all. Um, so, so I did order some more, uh, some more gas lenses so I can see if that's actually the problem. If it's not, and, uh, you know, maybe I'm just getting strange results. Then I'll have to like tear down the machine and tear down the torch and try to figure out if there's an air leak in here somewhere. But I tend to think it was just that, that gas lens. So, um, normally I'd be doing all this with my MIG welder, you know, especially being mild still. That's something I should probably talk about. So, um, I'm doing mild still. So I'm making this out of mild still, uh, just because I think that that's what the person doing it themselves at home would probably do. Um, I like mild still. I, I've seen a lot of, um, I don't know if it's false claims or just people don't really understand um, the metallurgy, uh, but, but mild still is a pretty good material um, to use. It's, it's strong, uh, yeah, it rusts, but uh, you know. Um, I had 40 year old exhaust in the bottom of this car and uh, it, 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 it was rusty but it was still holding together so you know how, how long do you plan on using it um, the stainless it, it's real reactive to heat and it expands I mean it'll expand quite a bit um, I've done through fender uh, kind of deals with exhausts where um, it had it all centered up, turned on the car, and, and suddenly the, the pipe is poking up against the fender, um, even though it had a quarter inch gap in it, and that, that was just, you know, simply because of the heat and, and those pipes expanding. Uh, that's a lot, that, that's a lot, uh, where I usually see cracks at is, is usually, it's a toe of the weld on, on what, sh what, what is good full penetration uh, stainless steel welds and I know that's, that that goes way against um, you know popular belief uh, but it's what I've seen so um, mild steel uh, as long as it's done well uh, you know you just basically treat it the same way you do stainless and uh, you weld it basically the same way it's going to be strong last forever and you throw a coating on it so um, you know pick whatever you want stainless is pretty no doubt, and uh, and and my, I think mild's durable um, and cheaper. Uh, so you know, so that's why I'm doing this out of mild. I think that if you're at home and you're uh, you know looking for a cheap TIG welder, then you're probably not looking to spend a lot of money on stainless or, or, or 321 stainless or titanium or anything like that. You're probably just using the mild steel because let's face it, it's cheap. Um, but yeah, I normally just uh, cut this up, get it lined up, and I just zap it with the uh, the MIG welder. And, uh, and be done with it. But since we're trying out this new guy, uh, we'll put it through the paces. Uh, we'll we'll uh, get it all tacked up with it. So, um, so that's where we're at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this pipe right here, right around, meow, meow. And we're gonna stick it in that, that V-band Pack it up so it's kind of going whoop it's going up because if it goes down when this thing compresses down here this a arm it probably bang up against it and we don't want that so straight straight and get us something like yeah something like that and we're still pretty close to that a arm not much but enough that it's concerning so um i'm just going to give it a little whoop on the up and then we'll put a little extra down on it and the down and it'll be good Whoa, 
GoPro. All right, so um, when you, when I'm, when you cut these things up, uh, you know, it's like, how do I snake this? Well, you know, basically I just get the pieces and I kind of eyeball it. You know, I know I want it to go up. So, like this guy right here got a little bit of a kick to it, and that's going to kind of bring it up. And then, you know, I have another one, and I'll basically try to do like like one at a time, maybe two at a time. Um, you know, that's going up here, and then this guy's probably gonna kick it back over, and then as I go back, I'll swoop, kind of down. But the big thing is, is just, you know, start start cutting. Um, don't be afraid to cut and, and make a mistake. And, you know, chances are if you, if you, if you fuck one up and, uh, and don't get the right cut, just, hey, throw it down on the ground and uh, come back to it when you're on, on the next bend or, or two. And that might be a perfect fit, perfect angle for what you need. Um, another thing that's it's important is, is just make sure you spend the time to get those cuts as straight as possible. You know, you can't weld uh, anything but metal, so you can't weld the air. So if there's huge gaps, it's going to make it more difficult and it's going to make it, you know, uh, not as strong, It'll make it less less aesthetically appealing. Um, so make sure you get them nice and flat. I, I like to take a belt sander and just kind of whoop and make them nice and flat. Then I'll bevel them inside and out uh, so they get nice fit up. So yeah, just uh, I'm gonna start doing this, just uh, tacking it up, maybe a piece at a time, and uh, and as I go along, I'll probably kick the video camera on. Um, Lots of clamps when you're doing shit by yourself. So, no. That's not bad. Alright, I'm just gonna finish tacking that a couple places. I'm blind. Oh, that sucks when you get flashed. Can't see what you're doing. All right, so.
All right, so we got that down by pretty much tacked up, so it's just uh, you kind of see it uh, going from the turbo and it kind of wraps down, down and around and spits out. We got a V-band there. We'll uh, put a flex coupler in between the downpipe and the uh, muffler, but it's pretty much a straight shot back. So it'll just come off there. It'll go straight down uh, towards the drive shaft over the rear axle and then out the back. So that is pretty much it. I'll get a quick shot from the top. Okay, so there it is. And down and out. So just take your time and, uh, you know, it's not too terribly difficult to figure out really. Um, what I forgot to talk about was the turbo placement. Uh, so one thing you got to make sure when you're placing the turbo is that you're thinking about everything that has to go on and with and around the turbo. So um, you know, don't forget that you have to you have to let it breathe. It's best to have it filtered. So you know, like I got an air filter on. I got one that would uh, kind of fit in a tight spot, and I plan on using it because um, I like my piston rings. <laughs> And uh, don't forget, you have to put oil, get oil in it, and you got to get oil out of it, and um, you know the heat that's created. So those are just some of the few of the things to think about uh, when you're placing your turbo. And all what we'll do next is uh, now the downpipe's all tacked up. Is um, I'll basically run the primary for my. I mean, it's basically going to be a log, I guess you guys could say. Um, but I'll run the primary pipe through there, and I'll weld that pipe with some like rods or some angle iron, uh, actually to the flange. So basically, what I'll have is I'll have a tube that's here, um, and it'll be just welded to the flange. And then what I'll do is I'll take that flange and that tube off of there, and I'll just basically cut the pipes. I got one and uh, three quarter inch. Uh, pipes and I'll just cut those guys up and I'll fish mouth them and cope that out and make them so they go up to that up pipe and they'll come here it'll put a wastegate bam be done <laughs>